Francisco on top of St. Louis. The Gladiators trying to get back into it. We'll be right back. Tonight's Simulation Football League broadcast on Twitch is brought to you in part by Nation's Best Football, helping NFL, college, and high school players to secure the bag. By ScoreStream, official live scoring app of the SFL. By Sector 6, the custom esports jerseys and apparel and the SFL shop provider. And by SpyGoat, dedicated to the craft of audio. Aerial shots tonight provided to you by Airviews, united by drone. Visit airviews.com to see more drone footage as we looked over the beautiful scenes of San Francisco, California. And back here at Shark Bait Stadium, 24 0. Sharks on top, but facing a first down and 10 with 11 minutes to go in the fourth. 3 2 look out of the Gladiators. And off there, and oh my goodness, cutting the leg out from underneath Adrian Powers. What a hit on the defensive side there for Freeman Peltier. A little bit of aggression because of their frustration so far. And, you know, you got you to gotta take it out on who you can, and the ball carrier is the best place for it to go. Four down lineman again, two in the backfield. And or, uh, McLean throwing there, and it is caught for a first down by Matt Burnham again. Burnham has seemed to have just been the short yardage king tonight for the Sharks. Yeah, the one thing that has been really helping this offense get going, they've been able to just find any open receivers. Everyone's getting involved. Three receivers in. McLean looking to throw. Fighters deep down the near side. Tipped up. Incomplete. Good coverage on the outside there by Colin Douglas. The veteran haven't called his name too much tonight, but he makes the play there. Just right there, 50-50 ball. And that time just hit off all four hands. Round. Second and 10 the sharks have struggled trying to kill the clock by handing off to powers so instead they're going to the short passing game but they did take a shot there on first down now second and 10 clock stopped with 10 minutes to play mclean there is a quick throw to manning who turns up field and is tackled inbounds at the 46. At this point of the game, San Francisco's just got to manage the clock. They haven't been getting it down on the ground, but there are other ways to do it. And one of those is plays like that. Just accurate, quick passing plays such as those. Get Find the open man and keep going down the field. Two receivers split out. Angus takes a short drop. Quick throw down the right sideline. Caught by Gabriel Manning. Five touchdown. San Francisco Gabriel Manning puts six more points on the board. And when it rains, it pours for the Gladiators. Or just disregard everything I say and just continue to make the board light up. How about that? Just Gabriel Manning just cuts through, finds the speed. Seam into defense, and he is gone. But burners like that, there's nowhere, no way to catch him. 30 to nothing. St. Louis looking to add the extra point and for, uh, or excuse me, San Francisco looking to add the extra point. For St. Louis's benefit, though, Levant, they have played better than this in many competitions, actually played uh, the Seattle Tyrants, who are undefeated to a, only a three-point loss in that game earlier in the season, but tonight has just not been their night. Uh, it, it seems like San Francisco just has their number. They haven't been able to get anywhere going on offense, and they've just been put in positions where it's just been unfavorable to do anything, and it's unfortunate. I don't like talking like this, but when you're down by this much, well tough 
San Francisco to kick off, and the return from Freeman Peltier will be out to the 28-yard line. And with 9.18 to go, Noah Johns brings the offense back out onto the field. Eleven attempts, twenty-two, or uh, excuse me, other way around, twenty-two attempts, eleven completions for Noah Johns has completed exactly half of his passes, only averaging three and a half yards per attempt. One interception to the no touchdowns tonight. Johns will take a deep drop, and he's going to look to toss it across the middle, in and out of the hands of Badir Ajlani. That just seems to be the case. Anytime Johns has found an open receiver, they've just they just they're open for a moment, blink and you'll miss it, misses it, and they right. end up dropping the ball. Three down linemen for the Sharks, three linebackers. They will only bring three. Johns loads up and fires down the field in and out of the hands again of Bidir Ajlani. These receivers for St. Louis have missed some big opportunities down the field. This time, just Lee Thomas and Barry Barkley right there just take a, just a shot at it. Shot right at the wide receiver. I don't know why we're focusing on Thomas when it was Barkley with the hit, but okay. Third and 10, an important third down here for St. Louis. They have not converted one third down tonight on 12 attempts, trying to do the improbable. Four rece five receivers wide, they throw an out route, and that is well out of bounds. And uh, that'll bring up fourth and 10. Levant with nine minutes to go. Uh, St. Louis might just be uh, packing this one in and taking the long flight back to uh, Missouri. Now with, with nine minutes left to go, there's still one goal at least for pride and for integrity. They need to get at least three points on the board, two off of safety. They need to get something out, out of this game. Can't just start thinking about going home without at least redeeming something from this game. Kick is away. Manning will only have a short return, and we will step aside for a game break with Commissioner Cameron Irvine. Thank you, Andy. Well, from a, a stop by Maurice Spurgeon on the goal line for Chicago to a blocked field goal the next play to a Corey Carter touchdown a few minutes later, Chicago has a touchdown on the board down 13-10 to Alaska in the fourth quarter. Back to Andy Levant and Mark in San Francisco. Thanks, Cam. Very interesting game over there. And first play from scrimmage for San Francisco is a Gabriel Manning reception on the sidelines for three. I'm not seeing him involved in the short passing game very much in this game, but he's been just the man for them so far. In the game of two touchdowns all on it. Three, actually. You have to count his return touchdown as well and he's just been putting St. Louis to the sword. Looking to throw again, McLean, deep bomb, caught in the open field. Matt Burnham sure has burned him on that one. Touchdown, Sharks. Ha, got him is what he said when he was on the line because going and turning, burning and going because there he goes gone straight on his street nine zone big play from angus mclean down the field and the the storm have not has not subsided here in san francisco the rain continues to fall on st louis's parade the gladiators have missed opportunities and they have just not had a good night tonight as Gabriel Manning and some of the other players here. Oh, the extra point is blocked. San, Fran er, San Francisco struggled there and St. Louis came through and blocked the extra point. Looked like the snap was a little low there. 
and this holder was just not ready for the ball and gave St. Louis enough time to, to knock the ball away. Unfortunately, unable to at least run it back. Kick off here. St. Louis now will have another chance on offense. A turn coming out for Freeman Peltier out to the St. Louis 30. Angus McLean wondering in the chat whether he can break 400 yards. Angus, you're at 348. 831 left to go, and I sure hope that you guys would uh, lay off the gas and maybe run some clock out if you get the ball back, but you never know. This is the SFL. Sometimes things happen. Three receivers split out here. Johns moves, sidearms it over to Diesel Dawson, who makes one man miss and gets right back to the line of scrimmage if not picking up one. Picks up one on the play, and he's been the leading producer of this offense, but unfortunately that doesn't come to much because he's only really gained one first down off his own effort, so he really needs the rest of his team to pick it up. 4-3 look out of this Sharks defense. Two backs in the backfield. And John's pressured immediately, has to check it down for no gain. Cody Scott adds a reception to the sheet. He loses no gain. And even worse for St. Louis, now the time starts to run because it's a completed pass. Time starts coming off, and there's not a lot of time left. Third and nine, four receivers wide. Saint, or San Francisco does not look like they're backing out of a blitz. They only bring three, but they still get pressure. Sidearm throw is one-handed, caught by Tito Moss for no gain again. Three plays on that drive, one yard. And he had to do the most to catch that pass. That was way behind him. Reached out and grabbed it and went backward. That's just unfortunate. Just not been able to break the threshold. They haven't been able to go forward. So with under seven minutes to play, Zabrowski will punt this one, and Gabriel Manning will fair catch at the 41-yard line. San Francisco's offense back out onto the field after uh, some good drives and a deep throw to Matt Burnham adds more points to the board on their last one. At this point, San Francisco's got to be thinking, all right, do we just keep burning them or do we try to go home? Well, two in the backfield. They give to power, so there might be a, an answer to your question. I was going to ask you a, another one, Levant. Uh, when is too early to start taking some, some kneel downs? Uh, 6.40 on the clock. That's uh, way too <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't think it's now. I think it's got to be five minutes time. Well, I said up, up 37, nothing. You might as well just take three and punt it away the way your defense has been playing. Uh, that's, that's break. That's giving them a chance to break that donut hole. I don't think they will. Playing to throw deep bomb again. That one is incomplete. It was trying to hit Gabriel Manning and there's my fear. Levant is, uh, for San Francisco, the more time that's on the clock, the uh, more time St. Louis can break the zero there. If you take a timeout or if you take a knee now, St. Louis either has to use the timeout or watch the clock roll. Well, taking the knee is just not in the playbook right now. We got, we got, we got six minutes, Andy. We got six minutes. We got to chill a little bit. <laughs> Four receivers spread out for McLean, who's going to throw again. And Gabriel Manning has a diving attempt. For a first down catch, what an impeccable play. He's just been doing it all game long there. He has speed, but he also has poise. Look at that grab right there. Looked like he was sliding into second base instead of catching the ball on that one. Manning today, 12 receptions, 195 yards, two touchdowns via the air, and one in the return game. Triple play for Manning. McLean throwing again, and it's Manning again down to the 22. There's just nothing. They really need to put two defenders on him to keep him in 
you know, on these one-on-one -on -one coverages or just taking the zone away from it. Been saying, really need to put more resources into Manning and defense seems to be taking it away and that's why he's been continuously getting open. Twins top of the formation Gabriel Manning playing in the slot. McLean to throw out route there to Burnham caught Burnham able to turn up field and pick up the first down to the St. Louis six. These Sharks are in a feeding frenzy and it is Shark Week Levant. And at this point, they have St. Louis wrapped in a cage, screaming for help. Get us out. That's what they're yelling right now. And uh, there's 4.50 left in the game. Two backs in the backfield. We'll see if they give to Powers. They do off the right-hand side of the line. And Adrian Powers cuts those six yards into three, a three-yard pickup. One thing they can't have their hats on right now is if they can get a stop right here and get the ball back. We're honestly, they just need to hold them to three if they can. Got to stop the bleeding a little bit. Bunch formation here. One receiver to the top of the screen along with the three at the bottom. Did here is to the backup back. They don't have a star back, but they do have Adrian Powers and now... John Blackman registering, registering a carry. That's how long they've been on the field on this drive. Four minute drive. Drive. And now the back are just starting to come in. Goal line defense here for the Glads. Backup QB is in. James Winston under center now. They will let all the time run off this. Hand it off up the middle there, and Blackman will gain one. It'll be fourth and goal, and I tell you what, Levant, the last time they tried a uh, field goal from this distance, it was blocked. Yeah, but it's just at this point in the game, you don't want to... I mean, okay, you know your defense can stop them on the run. You could go for it. That is true. That is entirely up to them, but that just feels unsportsman. Like they're... There's no need to be so brash. And it does look like they will attempt the field goal here, trying to make it a 40 burger in Shark Bank Stadium. Snap that time is good. The kick is up and through 40 to nothing. San Francisco on top of St. Louis. The Gladiators have struggled, uh, but they might have an opportunity here with the backups in to break that zero. I mean, that's honestly that's what they're going to have to hold their their hopes for is they have to at least have enough confidence like we could beat the twos we have to now that the twos are in we can score just score by any means necessary Meltier brings it out to the 27 and we, we would be remiss to not mention Levant that uh, this St. Louis offense two young players at their core Noah Johns, the 15th pick of the SFL rookie draft, and Diesel Dawson, a week three signing off the street. Uh, you know, they just need some time to gel, and, you know, this first season could be a building season for them. John's shotgun snap will throw a corner route here, and it's intercepted by the San Francisco Sharks. Gilbert Taylor down the sideline to the 30. And the backups were in, but Noah Johns tried to press his luck. Oh, that time we just see right there a big, big mistake route running right there. Finch and the rest of that wide receiver were bunched up and tripped up on each other. And that right there, I wouldn't even say that interception was his fault. I wouldn't was no John's fault at all. A wide receiver's got to know where the rest of his teammates are, and that was just miscommunication by everyone there. Four receivers wide, and James Winston in the shotgun. Winston will throw, moves in the pocket, fires one deep down the corner, overshot his receiver by quite a bit. Uh, he just wasn't looking for well enough downfield the pressure was in his face now uh you know the second uh, offensive line unit is out there 
first team already had some issues with pressure. It's going to be harder for, for him to get any time to throw back there. Hand off here, and that will go down at the line of scrimmage. St. Louis with a good play on defense by Shane Masters. That's his second tackle of the day. Able to stop the running back at the line of scrimmage. Good play by Masters to get through to center with a nice swim move right into the ball carry. Right. Third and ten. Four receivers split out for Winston. 3-2 look out of the St. Louis Gladiators, but not before the two-minute warning. 120 seconds on the clock. St. Louis down by quite a bit. The Sharks well in control of this one, up 40 to nothing. They will bring out the same formation. San Francisco likes the play they had called before. Adjusting the play at the line is Winston. They will just hand it off up the middle with Blackman, and Blackman will get to the 28, and St. Louis uses their first timeout. Well, Levant from here, it would be... Uh, if math serves me correctly, a 44-yarder? That should be easily make makeable for the kicking team as long as they just don't let anyone through to block a kick again. Chris Long is on 5'7", 160 pounds. And the small man has the kick up and through from 45 yards. It's now 43 points for the San Francisco Sharks. The past couple of drives have all ended up firstly. You know, the goal of this game now should be to milk the clock, but instead they just keep running the score up. But, I mean, got to keep doing what works. And if they can't stop you, then, then it's free reign. Sharks on to kick it back. Freeman Peltier waits near his own goal line on the left side of your screen. Kick is away, and the return will be out across the 25 to the 26. If you are still watching the broadcast, go ahead and chat now. We will do some chat shoutouts and show some love to everyone uh, who is stuck with us during our broadcast. Um, we appreciate you for being a part of the SFL, and if you want to get more involved with the league, you can join the broadcast team, the stats team, uh, you can also join the beat writing team, which has put out some really good articles as of late. Here is Noah Johns, who will check it down. Diesel Dawson steps out of bounds at the line of scrimmage. Chat shoutouts for Warhammer62. Mark Lopez is in there. Pseudo Nakai, also known as Charles Darty, who had a great call the other night. Ethan Kai, Big Dog1579. Hello, Big Dog. And Warhammer 62, lots of uh, people sticking with us. We appreciate you all. I also saw Mike Daggs up there earlier in the chat. Appreciate you being here too as well, Mike. Pump fake here from Johns. Fires across the middle. Complete. I believe that's Nick Finch for a six-yard pickup. Throwing again, and that one out of the reach of Badir Ajlani, who had to go to ground to try and make the play, and now it's fourth and four. You know, it's pretty tough to say whether they should go for it or not. You know, standard convention says, yes, they should. They, they should just always, always go for it. But at the same time, maybe you the score, punt it away, and just make sure that they at least can't keep scoring. <laughs> AJ Levy here as well. Angus McLean. Noah Johns fires the out route, caught by Tito Moss up on the far side of the field. Out of bounds with a minute 24 to go at the 43. Well, it's the second reception of the day for them, and at a key moment for them here. 
able to get down the field, find his way open, cut through to the defensive back, go on the outside and grab for the first down. And uh, I also want to point out, LeVon, if you can't get it done on third down, fourth down works too. And here's Johns deep down the field for Cody Scott to the 35, and St. Louis will burn their second time out. Just what he hasn't had all time, all day was time to th throw. Now that he has it, he was able to find the old man across the middle. That time right there, just a little lapse in coverage. Looked like Hightower was just not, you know, following his receiver and just, just let him through for the first down. Four receivers split out. John's in the shotgun again. Four, three look out of the Sharks who are playing deep in the secondary. John's fires. Corner post route caught by Nick Finch up to the 13. St. Louis using their last timeout to have plenty of time for a couple shots at the end zone here. Here, no one pressing him off the line, soft coverage, and just let him through. And the safety was just too slow to react. And Finch, you know, was able to just run the route to perfection. It was wide open, nothing to it but to do it. Not even a post corner route, just a straight up corner route that was not covered very well by the Saint or the San Francisco backups who were in getting some invaluable experience in an SFL game. John's deep drop, stands in the pocket, throws across the middle, incomplete, trying to hit Badir Ajlani. There was a school of shark there. At that time, pressure was able to get through and right into the face of John's, and that's been his day. At the 13, second and 10. Minute and nine seconds to go. Three, three look. San Francisco late blitz. They throw into the blitz. It's caught there by Cody Scott for three. Now they'll go hurry up since they've used all their timeouts. Shotgun snap for Johns on third and seven. Throws batted away. Well defended there by the Sharks, and a pressure throw does stop the clock, though, as Andy Katzenmoyer knocks it down. Time just was right in front of the receiver, and I'm shocked that there wasn't a flag for a late hit there. Here we have Katzenmoyer, bats the ball away, and while the ball didn't hit the ground, so the play wasn't dead when he was hit, but that's still a cheap shot right there. Fourth and seven, 52 seconds left to go and the opportunity for the St. Louis Gladiators to continue their drive and try and get in the end zone. Shotgun look here for Noah Johns. Fires back in the end zone, picked off and that will pretty much do it. Barry Barkley, a late interception and that seals the win like leftovers in some Tupperware. Yeah, and they're going to have to wash away the regret now because there is a wide open receiver under said right into the hands of Barkley. And by the way, Andy, now they can kneel down and end the game. So it was all San Francisco from kickoff to kneel down. The Sharks have led the way and some late shoving here as the frustration from the gladiators comes out well they have all the right to be frustrated it's just no way to be i understand but it just it's just not a good look just handle it in the locker room scream and shout there but don't take it out on the other team you had four quarters to do that and a long flight back home to St. Louis, Missouri, that the Gladiators can talk over uh, their mistakes and what they uh, might want to fix in the upcoming week. As that kneel down will end the game, the San Francisco Sharks are going to improve to 3-4. and four. The Gladiators fall to 0-6. Oh for Levant Irvine, Andy Hamilton, and Mark Lopez in the stats truck. Levant, all Sharks all night. Your final thoughts on the game? Well, honestly, they just haven't been able to contain Manny. 
and by leaving the one key weapon open all night and just not able to get to the quarterback with enough pressure they they did force some turnovers but they all came late and as you see right there and even on passing and that's just really what did st louis in the defense was out on the field all night going they had a little luck with diesel dawson maybe they should have gone to him a lot more that could have been something that they could have done but honestly they just They've had some unlucky breaks here and there, and they just... Angus McLean, an even 400 passing yards today. He got right to the number he was trying to get. Gabriel Manning, 200 yards via the air, two touchdowns receiving. Matt Burnham also had two touchdowns. Diesel Dawson, 63 yards on the ground. We want to thank Mark Lopez for doing our stats. And, uh... Levant, your player of the game, if you had to pick one. Gabriel Manning, for sure. I mean, he's had most of the scores, and he just honestly could not be stopped. Manning caught 13 of the 16 targets that were thrown his way, 16.8 yards per reception as we watch a couple of the Noah Johns interceptions. Had three this evening. Angus McLean was also not perfect. Two interceptions there. Uh, for him, Jacob Gustafson and Barry Barkley had the picks for the Sharks. On the St. Louis side, Freeman Peltier had the interception. Three tackles for newcoming rookie J.J. Tiger on the St. Louis side of the field. On the Sharks side, newcomer James Manzi. Two receptions, 10 yards, and a win. They are 1-0 with Manzi on the field. And your player of the game this evening is Gabriel Manning. You called it, Levant. Yeah, well, like just look at that stat line. 13 receptions, 200. Touchdown solidifies him as our player of the game. For everyone here at SFL Studios, Commissioner Cameron Irvine producing the game, Levant Irvine, Andy Hamilton, and Mark Lopez, thank you guys for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. It's the SFL on Twitch. See you.